<laughs> Good morning, everybody. You are listening to Coffee Talk. This is where we get down to the nitty gritty on brand photography, marketing, and graphic design. And today we have a super treat. We have Betsy Clark with us, who's a mindset chaplain, because we believe here at Coffee Talk that your mindset matters. And so we also have Joanne Johnson, our marketing guru, and Diane Cordero, who is our graphic design monster. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. So good to have you with us, Betsy. Thank you. It's so good to be had. <laughs> Well, Betsy, you know, I alluded to the whole, your mindset matters. So tell me, why does your mindset matter? Okay, so it's mindset, right? Yeah. And I'm a word nerd and I'm a third grader on the inside. So what have you set your mind to? Good point. That's not a rhetorical question. Like, that's a oh. real question. What, what have you set your mind to? Because you know what? We find ourselves in this place in life. We're going, ah, oi, how'd I get here? Well, because you set your mind to it. So I want people, you know what? I just want to challenge your thinking. Question your answers, because a lot of us are operating on outmoded operating systems. Absolutely. You're going to oh, yeah. be just like your mother. You're never going to amount to anything. You know, those kinds of things that we heard when between five and eight years old, those set the foundation of our, our mind loops, those kinds of things. And I'm just saying, listen, you got way more going for you than you give yourself credit to. So question your answers. What evidence do you have it's true that you're just like your mother? Well, I'm going, hallelujah, I'm just like my mother because you know what? She was a really, really neat woman. She's been gone for 30 years and wouldn't I love to have a conversation uh -huh. with her? So yeah. yes, I am just like my mother. And my siblings are so happy and so are all the nieces and nephews and grandchildren because I'm just like mom so we can reframe the things we chew on and meditate on and you know fear begins between your ears so let's <laughs> yeah. challenge that what have you set your mind to because that's why your mindset matters in my humble opinion I agree <laughs> I think that yeah I mean if, if you chew on gratitude and joy and playfulness those are the things you get more of and if you chew on anxiety and sadness and hardships that's what you get more of well there those things are in life i mean let's be honest we're going through a pandemic it's a pretty uh, challenging time and people are losing the things that matter to them and so i don't want to be cavalier on in you know i've i've gone through some tough times as some of you know and um, right. so how it isn't about our stuff or about our issues. It's about the impact. Right. And that's where mindset enters in. What's the impact? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's good. Like who um, you can, how we react, right? It's, it's not, you know, we can't always control what happens to us, but how do we react to that? We can, like you were saying, well, I, I, you know, most people go, I don't want to be like my mom, but you can spin that around and go, whoo, I'm like my mom and, and focus on the good qualities. It doesn't right. have to be that you're exactly a, a, you know, a clone of her. Maybe you got your good qualities from her, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here's, here's the other piece is even if we tweak that in, instead of reacting, we respond because if we think about that response ability, <laughs> then we're being responsible with how we think. So for me, reaction feels like catalytic, out of control, you know, knee jerk reaction. And I want to be more intentional in, in how I respond. So it becomes me being not stayed and, you know, in a box and all that sort of stuff, because that ain't never going to happen. But <laughs> response ability, what's my ability to have a good, healthy, response that moves the needle forward so not picking on you joanne but it's just no like, no that's fine i don't i don't look at it like that and again that's mindset right <laughs> so right. hey teach their own <laughs> yeah well and it's it's nuancing the words we use are so powerful yeah have absolutely. you ever heard have you ever heard someone just everything they say is just well i just mm -hmm. or it just well, I, I want to just take their faith and go, oh, I just love you so much. 
you <laughs> matter. Don't minimize everything with a just. It's like, you know, everything's a big butt. And I have enough of a big butt. I don't need more of <laughs> my center structure, my center structures. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think words matter. Absolutely. Well, and you know, how do you stay true to your own words? Like, like you you talk about Willie Shakespeare, to thine own self be true. Yeah. Well, what do you want? Where are you going? Are you really advocating for yourself the way you advocate for everybody else? Mm. Because here's the deal. If we talked to our friends mm -hmm. the way we talk to ourselves, I, I think- We I wouldn't think have any friends. Bingo, <laughs> Joanne, that's yeah. exactly right. I mean, Diane, is that- That's a pom-pom pom moment. <laughs> It is a pom-pom yeah. moment. Yes, yes, that is true. You know, it's uh, what it's Sandra Yancey says that stinking thinking. Right, <laughs> right. So it's, you got to work from the inside out and not let the outside affect you. That's one thing I've learned. So, and um, my mindset for last year was courage Ooh. to get confidence. Because for me to be on a video doing this live, the first time we did it, I was almost not terrified, but I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, so I've, it's no big deal. So, Isn't that fun? The, norm, yeah. the normal changes because growth is an inside job and that's where courage and confidence come from. Courage is being lion hearted. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. I like, I like that. that. That is good. I'm writing that in the comments. That's good so stuff. If you've ever been in a game reserve and you hear a lion roar, I mean, it, it, some of us are from Colorado Springs and you go up to the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo and you hear that yeah. lion roar and it reverberates. You can feel that resonance. So what happens if we apply that lion heartedness and we roar? It's I am woman, hear me roar. But what if you took that lion heartedness and you roared your brilliance, your magnificence, your offering before you go into an, an environment where you're scared spitless? I mean, yay on you, Diana. Here you are <laughs> showing up big and real, impacting lives because you chose to be lion hearted. Kudos to you, my friend. Well, thank you, Betsy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's true <laughs> because to sit here and feel, you know, I mean, I've been in the design field for 30 years. So at first I'm like, I don't know if I have anything good to say or anybody's going to hear me, but I think I do have good stuff to say. So, and you know, there's always going to be somebody better or who knows a little more or sees things a little different. You just got to take a risk and put some good out in the world and be some helpful. Because That's you know right. what, Diana, here's the deal. You are going to impact women that Trisha and Joanne and I can't impact. And the yeah. same is true. And so the thing is about um, comparing ourselves to others, there is always going to be someone who is better than you. And there's always going to be someone who's further behind than you are. So if we can compare ourselves to who we were a week ago or a month ago or a year ago, I mean, Trisha and I talk about this all the time. We were in a mastermind. And oh, were we green. I mean, we'd been in business for a while, but oh, I tell you some of the things we used to talk about, I, I kind of blush. And so we just compare <laughs> ourselves to where we were because comparison is the thief of joy. And I think that comparison is the most insidious thing that is going out there. I think comparison is the thing that is shutting women down in business from stepping into being the leaders they're designed to be because they're always compared. I don't, you know, I'm not like, and I'm not like, and I'll never, and I don't make as much money. You know, I'm not as cute. I'm not as smart. Fill in the stinking blank. And the deal is here we have to go. I can't help it, but Trisha Turpinoff helped me make this. How do we step into our power with grace? It isn't being boastful. It isn't being arrogant. It's owning your power so that we can do this thing called we lead with grace. So Trisha Turpinoff is amazing. She helped me make these grace cards. If y'all want some grace cards, you give Trisha my, your e email address or your mailing address and mailing I'll address. mail them to you because you know what? We all need grace. Yes. Yes, yes. we do. Yeah. That's what I love. I about like that. that. 
it is really cool because if you give Betsy your address, she will send anybody a stack of your grace cards. And you're I love that. Up. You're picking up a stack today, Tricia. That's right. Yeah, I need a grace I, card. I'll have to I'll, well, I'll have to put my name on the list. Yes, oh, Diana, yeah, yeah. Please. Yes. Yes. Email me. Well, actually, we're all on the same email. So you guys can just email yes, Betsy are. back. Okay. Everybody needs a grace card. You're like, hey, oh, thank you. We do all need to give each other grace. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. so the, can I, the world is a rough place. Or can be if you want to be. <laughs> so can I expand a little bit on that? I don't, yes. I, I don't want to hijack yeah. the whole conversation, but there's, this one's oh, no. pretty important. So grace is <laughs> this grace card gives you permission to love, accept, and forgive yourself. Well, the acronym is laugh. So if you know Trisha and me, you know that we laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal to love and accept ourselves. Yeah, we hear that. That's the whole kumbaya kind of piece. But the one where it gets nitty and gritty is forgiving yourself. So here's the definition that I absolutely love. It's from Richard Rohr. And he says, letting go of the past you wish you'd had. So if we could look at forgiveness from that standpoint, it changes everything. So here's an even deeper, juicier, grittier version that I haven't memorized, so I'm gonna read it to you. It's Coralie Buchanan and she says, forgiveness is not forgetting. Like, don't you get irritated? Well, just forgive and forget. Well, no, doggone it, I'm, I'm the queen of justice. That was wrong. And I'm not <laughs> condoning someone else's behavior, right? Mm -hmm. But this right here is the peace. Forgiveness is simply denying your pain the right to control your life. Bam. That's a mic drop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard that um, not forgiving and holding a grudge is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. Waiting, waiting for the rat to die. That's Amy <laughs> Lamont. Man, I'll tell you. Yeah. That's right. How many times do we just keep sipping away, waiting for the person who did the injustice to, you know? Yeah. And they've moved on with life. They don't even care. Oh. It's, it's gone for them. And well, we're and, the one hanging on to it. Yeah. And oftentimes, Joanne, they don't even know. No. They don't even know. So if they don't know, how can they care? So like, it's this thing. This <laughs> is mindset. This is our mindset. What are we yeah. ruminating on? Excessive rumination. Because if you ruminate on it, you're gonna get more of it. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like that. You know what oh, I find, wow. Betsy? I that when I get in these stuck in these, you know, cycles of, you know, I think we all do it. Yep. Spiraling and oh, and I I have to stop and I and I start focusing on other people, mm -hmm. then I immediately get out of it. Yeah. 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 Taking our eye off of ourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and, and another piece, Joanne, to speak to that is if you can do a state change. So I'm in my sunroom and I've been in my sunroom for two years. My dog got cancer and I decided to get rid of my office downtown and I came into the sunroom. Well, I spend a lot of time in the sunroom and I can start to pick up a crazy vibe. And so what I do to change my mindset is I will go walk a loop around the neighborhood or I'll run up and down the stairs to get the endorphins going, to get some movement. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have the luxury of doing that, I think what you've said is really huge. How can I reach out to support someone else? Sometimes it's a text, sometimes it's an email, sometimes it's a quick call. You know what, I know you're working, just wanted you to know I'm thinking about you, love you, bam. You know, so I, yeah. I love that idea. It's really- That is good stuff. Well, or Play-Doh, Play-Doh's very helpful as well. <laughs> Open a can of Play-Doh, right? I, I, I don't have mine on my desk. I have my little jewels. I've got my little fidgeter. I've got my little ball that, you know, I'm a visual artist. So I just watch this. I like all these little things that, you know, can 
bring out the playful third grader in me to just do that state change that we were just talking about, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good shiny objects, right? Here's the deal. We are multifaceted. I love this. We are more valuable than jewels mm -hmm. and we're multifaceted. So when we get in that, that funky state, we just say, this is just one, one facet of who I am. This thought, this moment does not define the totality of who I am. And I gave one of those to Trisha and like, we just have them in little shiny places <laughs> where we remember, you know what? You're not, you're not just this bad mood. You're not um, a biatch, you know, you're just not. It's just <laughs> a moment. Uh, that's remember. funny. Yeah. Exactly. Well, this is a perfect time to talk about play. Like what you talk a lot about, what's the opposite of play? Explain that more. Okay. So I don't know if you've heard this question, ladies, but, and it's not a trick question. What is in your mind, what is the opposite of play? The first answer is. Well, the first answer is work. You go yep. work and play. Yep. But, and sometimes work is the opposite of play, but I enjoy what I do. So it's not always that way, but yeah, that is the first word that comes to mind. For most of us, the first word is work. The opposite of play is depression. That's See, the first word that came to me was sleep because you're, well, you're completely tuned out or, you know what I mean? I like but if sleep. you're depressed, you sleep, right? I don't know. Right, right. <laughs> I don't want to put the I don't want to put the two together. But <laughs> well, sometimes that's how we we manage our depression, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's no this is not about judgment. This is just about right. um, different perspective. So I um, I've had two besties. One was a business bestie. One was a spiritual bestie. My best friend for thirty years. Both of them have taken their own life in the last four months. Oh, and yeah. mental health is the new human rights issue that is on the table. Mm -hmm. And so I don't mm -hmm. want to be cavalier about people struggling. We're, we're all experiencing loss right now. And I think because we're not able to connect belly to belly and go into the backyard and play catch or throw a Frisbee for a dog or, you know, do those kinds of things that we had access to a year ago, some of us have not incorporated play as much into their schedule this last year. And so what I would love to introduce is, you know what, especially you guys are highly creative and I'm sure this isn't a surprise, but I just did a play shop with Trisha and we had Play-Doh and we had shaving cream and we had all these things just in the middle of our work day to be playful so that, I mean, have you ever seen dogs play together like a, an older dog with a puppy they'll always yeah. take it to the limit and they never hurt the puppy but they they just tease and there's something wonderful about play it teases out the best in us don't you love that phrase i do yes it teases out the best in us so my assignment should anybody who's listening to this choose to accept this assignment is run to Walmart, not walk, but run to Walmart and get a little container of Play-Doh because just popping the top is gonna take you back. And we were howling during this play shop because it says, do not eat. <laughs> and, then it, and then it says, contains wheat. And I'm like, oh, what, what? So I ate paste, I didn't eat Play-Doh. <laughs> Who knows what Play-Doh tastes like? Because I, I do. You do? <laughs> it's salty. Oh, so is yes, that the we would... Is that the no, hard that's... one? No, the real one tastes. I remember this is a, a t... we tasted it, of course. My friends okay. and I. Right. And maybe it was rubble. all over our fingers. I don't know. I can't I can't recall. You can make it homemade too. Yes. And, and you, one I think it better. I think you can do it with jello or something. So it's sort of flavor, it smells good. Oh no! Did you put vodka in it? <laughs> no, that's gonna be an adult version. Okay, Betsy, oh, okay. for your workshop, we'll come up with that's a recipe right. with vodka. <laughs> Jello shots, Jello shot Play-Doh. Let's play with Jello. 
Right. On the cookie tray. <laughs> right. Well, because okay. you feel so vulnerable while you're creating and who wants to show it to anybody else? Well, then, so like we have the adult version that has no germs and no dog hair in it. There's your <laughs> jello shot and you just hit that and we're all in the Play-Doh theme. I think, you, uh, you know what, Diana, you are on to something big. <laughs> Oh my See, gosh. this is what the creativity circle here is <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. All right. We've gone off the rails. I'm going to re-listen just a little. Okay, I know, that's me what happens here. It was her. It was, it was Joanne or it was Diana. Yeah. Diana. Well, actually, Betsy, you are having another play shop May 8th, correct? I believe that's the date. Yes, they, we changed yes. a few things right. around, but um, I will get the correct date to you. Yes, we're doing another play shop. We okay. do one in April for those of you that oh. could make it to the first one. And then we're going to have a new uh, teaching in May. And so here I am so incredibly disorganized. that ah. it's, You know what? It's May 22nd. Oh, it's May. Oh. Because you're in New York. I'm in, yes, I am in New York. Thank you. May 22nd. All right. I'm putting it in there and I put your email in there. So there, that's awesome. Yeah. May 22nd. Well, yeah. so let's talk about your play shop is all about sparking joy. And so how in your words, do you spark joy? Well, I'm not the originator of that uh, idea because Marie Kondo had that whole thing about how to declutter and, you know, you hold something to your chest and say, does this spark joy? Well, you know, what if we took right. that concept and we made decisions based on does this spark joy? Now, I, I'm a, just a big old extrovert and everybody wants to have a Zoom chat with me because I'm fun to talk to, I think, or I, because maybe I listen to, I don't know. And I get these calls and I'll go, okay, I'm, I'm telling on myself, but I really do implement what I talk about. It's like, huh, does this coffee date on Zoom spark joy? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the ways that I make decisions. So how can we bring spark joy into our everyday life? Not just decluttering, because I think decluttering is huge it creates space and it's expansive for other things to come in life just can't handle a, a vacuum so we'll fill it with other stuff so if you don't like the trajectory of your life then my challenge to you is have a strong cup of tea strong cup of coffee or jello shots i don't care um and really sit down and reflect what sparks joy this is your life, and I, I hate this term, but this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real deal. And if you aren't pleased with the trajectory of your life, really start putting your hand on your heart and say, does this spark joy? And then go and, and possibly journal. And, and it's not always easy. And then go and find a few safe friends and say, does this resonate? How could you gently reflect back to me based on what I've written? And, and you only you know who is trustworthy for you to talk to. But I think we are coming out of a pandemic where we've been really isolated. Isolation is a big deal. Japan yeah. now has a minister of isolation. Are you kidding me? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we need to come together when it's safe. We need to come together and play. We need to come together and do those things that spark joy. Because it's been a rough year for a lot of us, for most of us, if we're honest. And we're coming out. Here's the challenge. It doesn't have to be that way. So find support. Find a trusted friend, try, find a coach, find a mastermind, find your people and go and it is vulnerable. And have you ever noticed when you're vulnerable, you feel the most vulnerable? <laughs> That's where yeah. lionheartedness comes in. Right. 
that's where being courageous comes in. So I don't know I if that answered your question, but there you yeah. go. Yeah, I do. I like that. that. No, well, years ago, and it didn't become a habit. I'm sorry. I was at, a, I was somewhere at a workshop or something and we started a joy list and it didn't have to be things that cost money or anything, but just make a list of things that bring you joy and then go to that list a lot, <laughs> you know, so, and playing with the dog or whatever it was, you know? So Joanne, here's the thing. If any of the listeners on this would like that 31 days of joy, I have a list that speaks very much to what you talk about and they don't cost a lot of money. So if people are interested, that's available. Oh, awesome. Oh. Whoops. I just, sorry about that. I was on Facebook and I hit the wrong button. I was putting something in the comments. Oopsie. We're all good. Yes. Can you send me that email, Betsy? And I will pop it into the comments. Uh, when we're not live yes <laughs> for the for the joy list the 30 yes yep. please i, I will pop that. that right in there without interrupting us and then and, for the um mailing address if you want um, oh, yeah. the three the three graces i would love um i would love to send you those grace cards we all need grace absolutely absolutely grace card and and then we only have a, a couple minutes left but it's interesting when you're talking about sparking joy, we're talking a lot about doing inward work, but so many people feel like taking care of yourself is selfish. What would you say to that, Betsy? Self-care is the most honoring thing you can do for yourself. The old joke about when you're flying and if we lose altitude, have you ever felt breathless? Because <laughs> life is going so fast. Right. We need an oxygen mask. And if you are going to be of service to anybody, if you're small, traveling with small children or codependent husbands or whatever, um, you know, put your oxygen mask on first. It's the only way you can serve others. And you know what? When you're tired, when you're hangry, you're not paying attention to your water intake, the kind of quality of food your sleep, your exercise, those kinds of things, you come tuckered out and less them. You can control those things. What are the things you can control? And what are the things that are beyond your control? Left them lay, don't pick them up. Control the things that you can. And, and taking care of yourself is not selfish. It's appropriate. It's the healthy step to take. It's the oxygen mask. I love it's that. Oxygen mask. Well said. That. What a good way to uh, absolutely conclude. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Betsy. So Diana, what's, what's the takeaway? Three words. What's your takeaway? Spark joy. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joanne, what's yours? Um, Self-care. Just it's my, it's my oxygen. <gasps> Self-care is oxygen. Ooh, that's, that's, that's good. That oh. is self care is oxygen. I'll put that in the. Ooh. Okay. Also, the lion heart. Oh, lion that was heart. Good. Yeah. That was a good Wait, one. What was that one? Lion heart, roar. Arr. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Reverberate, awesome. you know, power. Yes. Uh, Trisha, what's your takeaway? Mine was definitely um, I loved Play Shop, Joy, and Play Doh. <laughs> well thank you ladies i i'm so impressed with who you are keep doing it don't grow weary and well doing we need you absolutely thank yeah. you so much you. betsy it was great having you yes as our guest wonderful today. absolutely yep you rock betsy thank you for sending me the goodies and i'll get more into our I'll get more into the Facebook comments for everyone. And again, thank you, everyone. This is Coffee Talk. And today's special guest was Betsy Clark, our mindset chaplain. Yay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. See ya.